Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Abdul Bakri, and these are five science based tips for optimal energy this Ramadan. Number one is proper hydration. Now, we're not camels. A lot of us drink three to four cups of water at Sahur. We end up spending the next two to three hours urinating all that out, and by the end of the day, we're very lightheaded. That's because we're not properly hydrating. To properly hydrate, you need to hydrate with sodium, water, and glucose. That increases your total blood volume. They have these pre made electrolyte packets that you can just pour in water and drink at Sahur, because drinking with electrolytes will increase your total blood volume and make you feel much better by the end of the day. Now, you can make your own cheaper version at home. I'll have a description in the link below of how to do that. Uh, but if you do have high blood pressure, be careful with this. Talk to your doctor before doing this because um, you can end up increasing your blood pressure. Number two, fix your caffeine habit. So for all my coffee addicts out there, I know at the end of the day, you're having these caffeine withdrawal headaches and you're feeling very miserable. Now, the solution to that is one of two things. Either A, you get off caffeine before Ramadan, which frankly, no one's really going to do. Or B, you can take slow release caffeine at Sahur, which is a type of caffeine which slowly releases into your blood and breaks down and gives you a steady stream of caffeine. So you're not having these withdrawals, you're not feeling those headaches. What I like to do is take a cup of coffee and then some slow release caffeine at Sahur. I like this Genius brand. That way I have a big boost of energy at Sahur and then I have a steady stream of energy throughout the day and I don't feel the crash. Number three is optimize your sleep. Now, many of us have a hard time getting enough sleep between Tarawih and Suhoor because there's just not enough hours to get your full amount of sleep needs. But what you could do is sleep biphasically, which means you sleep in two phases, two shifts, uh, ideally from Tarawih to Suhoor, and then one more time, ideally after Luhur. Uh, that way you get all your sleep needs, and it's from the Sunnah anyways to take naps, so it's a win-win situation. Number four is calibrate your circadian clock. Now, everything on our body runs on a 24-hour circadian clock, but what happens in Ramadan because of the lifestyle changes is this clock can get confused which wreaks havoc on your health can make you feel very tired and lethargic. To fix this, what you want to do is get 10 minutes of bright sunlight right after Fajr. You can go for a walk, get some sunlight. This tells all your body systems, hey, it's daytime, it's time to wake up. This will give you energy throughout the day and then it will help you sleep deeper at night so you wake up more refreshed. Number five is beware the nocebo effect. Now studies show if you go up to somebody and tell them they didn't sleep enough, they end up looking more tired and behaving more tired the rest of the day as a result of that belief. This is the nocebo effect. Negative beliefs cause a negative outcome in reality. And this is the opposite of our sunnah. Now Ramadan's gonna be tough. You're not gonna get all your sleep needs. You're gonna be tired, but push through. It's just one month. There's better can at the end. And don't make it worse and more difficult than it has to be because of the nocebo effect. Thank you for watching. I hope that was beneficial. Let me know what questions you have in the comments below and I'm wishing you and your family a Ramadan Mubarak.